we're going to talk about electric flux and um, to do that I want to review electric fields with you really quick and then how to draw electric field lines and then uh, we'll get to the definition of electric flux from there and then we'll talk about electric flux uh, through a closed surface okay so now an electric uh, field right if you have an isolated charge of some kind so here's some positive charge that I've isolated that means I've, I've there's some protons here that I've, I've separated them from their electrons and spread those electrons somewhere out in the universe somewhere and uh, happily our universe is electrically neutral so there um, but uh, you can you know scrunch up some positive charge and put some negative charge somewhere else well remember how we define the electric field if if, if you're a little positive test charge right here then you're going to feel a repulsive force from this isolated positive charge and we said that that electric field was just equal to that electric repulsive force divided by the charge on my chest charge q naught and this gave gave me units of newtons per coulomb but this tells me what electric fields do if i'm if if you have an electric field that's a region of space where if i'm a positive test charge i'm going to feel a force oh, no and and so that's what electric fields do they apply forces to charged particles um, and uh, now by the way uh, the electric charge here is blind I mean it, it's not a conscious creature okay uh, it just feels forces it, it doesn't know like I could cover this up it doesn't even know that there's charge over there it just feels a force okay it just feels a, a repulsive force and um, and so we describe that repulsive force uh, you know by this equation with electric fields and then I can connect these forces and make electric field lines and uh, and the electric field lines just means that hey if I'm right here and I'm a positive test charge I'm gonna get pushed in this direction okay now another thing uh, we said about electric field lines is that the farther apart the field lines are the weaker the field okay and so uh, we're gonna need to understand uh, that idea when it uh, comes to uh, electric flux uh, so first let, let me give you a qualitative um, idea of what electric uh, flux is um, electric flux is a measure of the uh, amount it's a quantity of electric field lines okay like I drew one two three four five six electric field lines I guess I'll extend that and make it okay around that so that's what electric flux is it's it's a measure of uh, the amount of field lines that I'm going to draw that's one way of looking at it now <clears throat> it's not a measure of how strong the field is let me show you what if I had electric field lines that were like this very strong there's a uniform field but if I now by the way what what caused these electric field lines well somewhere out in the universe out here I had positive charge and somewhere out here I had negative charge okay and electric field lines start at positive charge and end at negative charge okay and I could say well how much flux is there well there's one two three four five electric field lines now if I put a positive test charge in there it's gonna feel a pretty strong force because these field lines are very crowded together well take a look at this though what if I had the same amount of the same number of field lines but the charges are further apart the, the charges that are the source of those field lines are further apart right so it's the same oh, what I need another one huh So here I drew one, two, three, four, five field lines because in, in these two situations, look, look at this situation right here. In this situation, 
I've got five units of positive charge separated from five units of negative charge, but the field lines are closer together. Now that means that the field is stronger. Now why does it mean that the field is stronger? Because if I'm a positive test charge, do you see that I'm closer to more, more of the charge here and over here? And if I use uh, Coulomb's law on, on this guy, it's, and, and this guy, it's going to have a much stronger effect on my positive test charge. Now, if I put my positive test charge right here, here's my little Q naught. Well, these are more spread out. I'm farther away from these test charges. I mean, from these uh, these separated charges. I'm farther away. So the, the force is going to be less. So the field is weaker. So the more spread out your field lines are, uh, the, the weaker it is. Now, so the electric field can be thought of in, in, in two ways here. The, the strength of the electric field can be thought of in two ways. And we have our regular way of thinking about it and our official way. The strength of the electric field is the force on my test charge divided by the charge on my test charge. But I can also think of it as, as how crowded my electric field lines are. Um, here, the field lines are, very, are quite crowded. Here, they're quite far apart. So you can kind of think of how strong the field is, how many newtons of force you have per coulomb of charge. Uh, you can kind of think of that as a measure of how crowded these field lines are or how dense they are. The density of the electric flux. So electric flux is a measure of how many field lines I draw. And um, if I have, now here I drew five units of electric flux. Over here I drew five units of electric, the same amount of electric flux, but the density is less. Question? Okay. Really what it is, okay, we use electric field lines to help us visualize the field. Okay, it's a construct. Really what the amount of electric flux is going to be a measure of, and we're going to get to that with Gauss's law here in a few minutes, is how much charge has been isolated. And that is real. Okay. But... Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to describe how crowded these field lines are. Uh, okay, so we're going to say that um, E, the electric field, is or at least the magnitude of the electric field. We won't talk about direction here. It's going to be a measure of, of how many field lines there are, or the amount of flux per unit area that it, it's, that it's going to go through. Okay, uh, flux, the amount of flux per unit area. That's how crowded these field lines are. And uh, here, uh, the electric field is weak. And so notice that these are spread out over more area. Here, the area that they penetrate through is much less. So it's a higher field. It's a higher density. Now, we're going to base the definition on stuff that's real. Okay, I said field lines don't really exist in space. They're just a, a mental construct we use to visualize the space. And that's true. But, um, but we're going to think about it in these terms for right now. Now, we have a symbol for the amount of flux. And it's a Greek letter, capital phi. Okay. And, uh, and then we're going to use A for area. So we're going, now we're going to use this to define what electric flux is, to quantify electric flux. I mean, how many field lines I draw? I'm not going to say one, two, three, four, five lines. Okay, we need a better measure of that, of, of how much electric flux there is. So <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to define it this way. The amount of electric flux is going to be equal to E, the, the, and, and think here, the electric field, uh, times the area that that uh, electric field goes through. 
Now I'm just going to give you e.da right away here, and I'll, I'll draw some pictures of this. Notice that these electric field lines are, are going to uh, the right here. Um, I want to know how many, what area, here's, here's a, an area, I'll try to draw it in three dimensions here. Here's an area, right? Um, and these field lines are going through that area. Okay, so this, now if I took that same area right here and I put it down here. So we're taking area as a vector? Yes, we'll talk about area as a vector in just a second. Okay, just, just wait a second, we're going to get to it. Now, here's the same area, but notice something. There's, do you see that there's less flux? or fewer electric field lines going through the, this, this area than up here. Here I try to draw the same amount of area. Here I've got three arrows going through it, and over here I got all five of it going through. So uh, we'll say that, hey, this area has uh, more electric flux. Now let's talk about the direction of an area here. What do we mean by that? Well. If you take an air, uh, area has direction, okay, um, and it's hard to do this on j using just the document camera, but I'll, I'll try. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. If, um, in fact, let me, um, let me zoom out all the way. And we'll see what happens here. Um, here I've got a little piece of paper that has area, right? Uh, so here I've got a little sheet of paper and it's got area and you could figure, you could measure what this is, the width and, and the, the length and multiply them to get a total area, A. But how is that area oriented in space? Well, what we do is we use um, a direction that's normal to it. I'll just use my pencil here. Now, if if I hold my pencil like this, the pencil's straight up. Now, if the pencil's straight up, okay, that tells me about the orientation of this piece of paper. It's flat against the table. If, if, if you say, hey, the pencil is pointed straight up, well, that means that the piece of paper is parallel to the table, doesn't it? Now, watch this. If you tell me the pencil is horizontal like that, that's going to tell me that the piece of paper is now kind of oriented vertically like this, right? Or in any orientation in three-dimensional space. Now remember we kind of did this with rotating objects, didn't we? You know, we had a spinning wheel and we said, well, the direction of the angular velocity is really kind of the orientation of the uh, axis of rotation. Well, now we're doing the same thing here. The area, it has a um, magnitude, that is how much area, and then we're going to use the direction of an arrow perpendicular to the surface to represent the direction of that area. Okay, so that's kind of what we're doing. Now, if I've got some, let's say I've got some lines of electric flux here. like this well if I put an you know if I put my area well um, you know I'm gonna kinda hold it up like this but that doesn't really work very well but what if I tilt it like this I mean what if my piece of paper was oriented like this well how many lines of flux are moving through my piece of paper none now take a look it has a certain, let, let me put it like this. So here's a cross, here's my piece of paper, okay? And it's got an area, and I'm gonna choose this to be the direction of my uh, perpendicular vector. I could have chosen down, but I'm just gonna choose up. So there's area, and here's E. So these area arrows represent my electric lines of force, and this represents the area of the piece of paper. So how much, how many of these lines are going through this piece of paper? Well, none of them. 
So we'd say the electric flux through the paper is equal to E dot A, right? But E dot A is equal to the magnitude of E, the electric field, the magnitude of the area, times the cosine of the angle between them. Well, the cosine of the angle between them here is 90 degrees. Well, I mean, uh, the, the angle is 90 degrees. The cosine of 90 degrees is zero. There's zero flux. Now, if I were to hold my piece of paper like this, though, all of the flux is going to go through the area. Okay? Because now, the angle, you know, if I, if I hold it like this, well, let me redraw it. If I hold my piece of paper perpendicular to the electric field lines, like this, so here's E, um, the paper itself is perpendicular to the, to the electric field, but the vector that represents the paper is now parallel to the electric field. And so we say, oh, the amount of electric flux that goes through the piece of paper, well, it depends on how strong the field is, it de and it depends on how big the piece of paper is, and it depends on the angle. Well, now the angle between the area vector and the electric field vector is zero, and the cosine of zero is one. So we get the maximum amount of flux through that piece of paper of electric flux. Now, this word flux gets used a lot, and it's you can think of there's uh, like water through a hose. They can talk about the flux of water through a hose. Um, they can talk about like he, anything that's kind of flowing or, or moving. Now, electric line uh, field lines don't really flow, I guess, but it's you can kind of draw it as it's going through. Anything that's going through something, we call that flux. And you can think of solar flux, like the amount of sunshine that's moving through a window. You can think of that as solar flux. Um, you know, the air that you know that flows through a you know, or water, it's anything that's flowing like that, you can kind of think of that as flux. Yes? So what does this have to do with flux capacitors? We're not, we're not to flux capacitors yet. That, that's coming later. Okay, that's right. Now, um, here's something that's kind of interesting. Um, you can take this and, uh, I guess I'll have to use green. Um, ooh, green. Um, and we can put the electric field lines through a closed surface. Now, I'm going to draw a closed surface as just being a square. Let me zoom in a little bit. OK, now, this is very, um, this is kind of weird. And, but, it, but, it, but it's logical. OK, I'm just going to tell you. All this stuff on Gauss's law that we're going to get to and, and, and flux and all that, it's kind of weird, but it makes logical sense. So it's okay if you'd say, oh, E and M is weird. I'll agree with you. But people say, oh, E and M doesn't make sense. It does. Maybe you haven't made sense of it yet, but it does make sense. Yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> Isn't that cool? <laughs> hey, that's that's all right with me. I like. Kind of reminds me of my days in the '60s. All right, now, shh, shh, shh. be quiet. So now I'm going to put a closed surface in there, like a box, but I'm I'm looking at it in cross section. Okay. Now, so let's just look at these four surfaces. Now I'm going to say, well, I'm going to call this, you know, area one, area two, this area three, and area four, okay, and um, and I'm going to look at each area separately. Like, how much flux moves through um, this guy right here? Area one. Well, here's the here's the vector for it. Now, let me tell you about uh, how you choose the direction of your area vector. 
usually when we're talking about flux, we're going to be talking about closed surfaces. If you have a closed surface like this, we choose, uh, if we have a closed surface like this, we always choose the direction of the area vector is pointing away from the interior volume enclosed by the surface. Yeah. Yes, exactly. You're going to have negative flux here in a minute. Now, look at uh, phi 1. The amount of flux through this surface, how many field lines are going through there? Zero, right? Because we've got, okay, E, we've got a certain electric field, E. Uh, and uh, dotted with A1, but these guys are perpendicular to each other, so you're going to get zero. Now, V2, that is the flux through here, is going to be equal to E times A, <coughs> dotted with A2. Uh, and this this area vector is pointed away like that. So it's good. So this is just going to be E times A, or A2. And this guy, the flux through here, oh, it's zero. Right? There's no field lines going penetrating through that area. Just like uh, V1, V3 is zero. But now look at the interesting one is A4. Now A4, or the P for 4, is equal to E dot A4. Well, this is just going to be E times A times the cosine of the angle between the vector E and the vector A. Well, it's not 0 degrees, it's 180 degrees. And the cosine of 180 degrees is negative 1. This is going to be negative E times A. In other words, we're going to have negative flux. Now, I drew a box here. So A4 and A2 are the same area. So when I add up all the, the total flux, when I add up the total flux through this closed area, what do I get? Zero. I get zero. Now, that doesn't mean the electric field is zero. It just means there is no net electric flux through a closed surface. If you have a closed surface placed inside an electric field, the total amount of electric flux is going to be uh, zero, the, the net electric flux. You'll, you'll have just as, well, here's kind of what we're saying. What if instead of a box, I just put a an amoeba? I don't know what that is. Okay, now, look, for every, and here's basically what's going on. If you have a closed surface embedded in an electric field, there's just as much, for every field line that goes in, there has to be a field line coming out. There's just as much going in as coming out. Going in as going out. Okay? So, by the way, even if the field wasn't uniform, I've been drawing uniform fields because it's easy to do that, but it doesn't matter. If it's a, a non-uniform field or if you have a blob. So, we can say that the, uh, the amount of, mag of electric flux through a closed surface is zero. Okay? Um, now, how would I, of course, add this up? Well, here I, I added all the fluxes, flux I, I don't know. I added all, the total flux was the summation, right, of E, I, of, of E, well, E is a constant, but we'll just say E, I, A, I, where I equals 1 to 4 in this case. Right? Um, I'm sorry. In this one, in this one up here, we had one, two, three, four areas. And we, we, we oh, I should put a little dot right there and then I'll, like that. Well, what if we have a 
curvy surface or we have a weird electric field that isn't necessarily uniform well whenever you see a summation like this you can say well we're going to integrate E dot dA. Now this is really the definition of electric flux right here. This is the official definition of the number, in quotes, the number of electric field lines, which isn't really having anything to do with the number of electric field lines you're going to draw when you're, when you're drawing a picture of it, but um, of electric flux. Uh, or, I mean, um, the amount of electric flux is equal to how crowded the electric field lines are times uh, how much area it goes through. Well, where's my little dot dA? Well, here it is. There's my little tiny dA. And here my dA is, is, is just parallel. But look over here. Here's a little dA. And it's got a, a direction that's normal. And, and in over here, I've got a, um, a the direction of that. Well, it, it's it's uh, you know we can figure out what the flux is through that. It's going to be negative, right? But so you sum them all up, and and you've got it. Now, uh, if your surface is a closed surface, okay. Now pay attention because this is I don't know if you guys have seen this before. Well, maybe some of you have, but many of you you have it if you are figuring out how much flux there is through a closed surface like that this is so special integrating over the surface area of a closed surface is so special that we have a special symbol for it we put a little circle in the integral sign and that little circle means it's a closed surface. Okay, this area right here, we're going to integrate over the entire surface. Now, look. You can. Um, if I, how do I integrate over a, an open surface? Okay, well, don't do this to your notes, but all I got to do is erase one of these, figure out the flux through that, plus the flux through that, plus the flux through that. Oh, you can't. I don't know. <laughs> well, here's what we're going to do, folks. I mean, we're ne here's a hint. I'm going to get to this next. We're never really going to integrate this. It, this, this is always going to turn into a problem like this. Um, we're only going to uh, integrate over uh, surfaces that we don't need to use analytical integration to do. <laughs> so it's gonna, they're going to be very highly symmetric charge distributions we're going to integrate over. All right. So anyway, this is Gauss's law. No, no, it's not Gauss's law. This is the definition of electric flux. We'll get to Gauss's law in a few minutes.